She was the undisputed queen of the Pyeongchang 2018 Olympic Winter Games. Czech Esther Ledecka pulled off an astonishing upset in the women's Super G, skiing from the back of the pack and stealing gold by one one hundredth of a second, a victory that even left her in disbelief. Seven days later, as a heavy favorite in snowboard parallel giant slalom, Ledecka overcame a mountain of pressure to win her second gold medal in South Korea. Then 22, Ledecka's accomplishment was unprecedented in nearly 100 years of Winter Olympic history. She became the first woman ever to win two gold medals in two disciplines, skiing and snowboarding in this case, at the same Winter Games. And now the winter sports world wonders, can Esther maintain this torrid pace down the mountain and achieve a similar feat come Beijing 2022? Hello and welcome to this video edition of ATR Radio. I'm Brian Pinelli. Joining me now from her home in Prague, Czech Republic, is the double Olympic champion, Esther Ledecka. And uh, Esther, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm fabulous. How are you? Doing well. It's a, a little chill in the air, sunny day. I almost feel like we should be on our skis or, or snowboards here today. For sure, yes. In Prague, it's like uh, two degrees, so I'm really feeling the snow atmosphere. Now, Esther, uh, you, for those who don't know, you're in Old Town, Prague. Uh, I'm just across the river in, in Prague 5. To my calculation, we're, we're about two kilometers apart right now. Would you say that that's sufficient social distancing? <laughs> I think it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, what, what have these past uh, six, seven weeks been like? Obviously, challenging for everybody, especially athletes, uh, the inability to train. Uh, where have you been and, and have you managed to train? Uh, obviously, your season ended a, a few months ago, but what's it been like for you? Yeah, after after I closed the border in Czech, we, we returned from Austria. We were training uh, in the Austrian until uh, the very end. And then we came came here. I was in the strict quarantine for 14 days. And then uh, I was able to work out like at home. And then uh, they were losing up some rules and we were able to go to Czech mountains for uh, two weeks, which was awesome. We we used the rest of the snow, which is not not there anymore. <laughs> it's only grass now. And even in the the last days, it was a little bit like uh, I was training two sports: one uh, grass skiing and skiing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun uh, to do at least a few turns. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward if they let us go at. Uh, maybe Saturday to go for uh, Austria for some training uh, with the long skis because here it was only for slalom and GS, which is good because we never train those and I'm I'm happy to do that. But uh, we need to test the long skis now. And of course, knowing the Austrians, uh, they're back on snow testing skis. Uh, Switzerland maybe had a better season than, than the Austrians this year. Uh, looking ahead from what we know, and as you mentioned, the restrictions are easing here in, in Czech Republic, Austria, some other neighboring countries. Do you foresee yourself being able to have a, a, a productive summer, hopefully of, of dry land training away from the snow? Yeah, I hope so. You know, uh, usually we go to Greece uh, with my family. We have uh, quite a base there and uh, I'm, I'm doing a windsurfing. So we are at the windsurfing round in Lefkada. And uh, so usually I do my summer preparation there. I hope this is going to be possible this year. I'm not sure about that yet, but I still hope. If not, then I will stay probably at Prague or I will go to uh, Spindleruf Mlin, which is uh, the mountains in Czech, and we will do some trainings there. But uh, yeah, I'm, anyway, I'm looking forward. It's going to be, it's going to be, everything's going to be okay. Absolutely. Positivity. I like it, Esther. Yeah. Congratulations on, on a great Alpine season. I mean, maybe some after you won the gold medal in skiing in Pyeongchang said, you know, this was a fluke, but you definitely backed it up this year. Your first World Cup downhill victory in Canada. Uh, I know you had some podiums in, in uh, Germany, also in Kranz Montana, Switzerland. Uh, top 10 overall standings. And, and second in the downhill standings, uh, nearing a, a World Cup title that no Czech has ever achieved in alpine skiing. Uh, uh, obviously, the World Cup finals were canceled in Cortina, but overall, uh, pretty satisfied with your season on the snow? 
Well, for sure, yeah. Uh, I think nobody really expects that. Uh, we moved uh, really forward this year, so I'm proud of my team. Uh, that's the main thing. They really deserve these uh, results and they made a great job this year, uh, all, all the years. And uh, that's why I'm here and that's why I had these results. So, I mean, it was a really fun year. I, I was a little bit uh, sad that we couldn't do more uh, snowboard races because, because I also was uh, prepared to go two more races in the end of the season for snowboarding, but then they were canceled because our, unfortunately they were in uh, uh, Italy, uh, one and one in Germany, and it was, it was not possible anymore. So, but yeah, that's the situation right now. And uh, yeah, but overall, I think I I think it was very positive and a great season. And and what about you mentioned the snowboard races in Italy, uh, also the World Cup finals in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Obviously, those were canceled also due to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, what was that like for you as an athlete? You're you know having your best season ever. Maybe the downhill title was a little bit out of reach, but you know nevertheless, this was something that that no one expected. Yeah, I was. I was really looking forward because I was. Uh, we made a bet with my coach about uh, that if uh, if I'm gonna to going to gain uh, 500 points, which means that I can uh, participate in the uh, in the finals of World Cup uh, in all disciplines, uh, then I will. He has to take my suit on and my. Uh, gear you know all my gear and do uh, the uh, inspection for slalom because i would like to ride there slalom as well and he will have to do the inspection in my gear and uh that's that makes me a little bit sad that this this didn't happen but maybe in the future we can still accomplish that but uh anyway uh i'm i'm very happy for these 500 points it was uh, really unexpected and I'm happy that we we <laughs> were able to make it, even though we didn't have these last races to uh, you know collect some more points. Yeah, you're referring to your uh, alpine skiing coach Thomas Bank, uh, right. Justin Ryder, uh, American. Your your snowboard coach. Just back to snowboarding. Uh, like you said, you didn't uh, compete in as many snowboard races this year. Nevertheless, uh, a second place and I believe a victory in Slovenia in January. Uh, moving forward. Is the alpine skiing and the snowboarding uh, equally important to you? <laughs> of course it is. And it will always be, I think. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm still having fun, you know, come. Uh, and I have to say that uh, even though when I was more skiing this season, I still felt like something was inside of me, which, which was not disappointed, but a little bit sad that I couldn't go more also snowboarding sometimes. But this was how the season developed. I didn't really, um, I wasn't really satisfied with my material on snowboard side this year from the start of the season. So I decided to go more on skiing side. And then, you know, the unexpected results from, from the skiing really made the, uh, the season go in the direction more in ski way. But as I said, I wanted to go two more races in the end of the season uh, on snowboard. But unfortunately, this was not uh, possible. But yeah, I, I for sure want to combine both disciplines, both sports all the time. <laughs> sure. Uh, two years ago, there was a conflict with the World Championships, uh, snowboard in Park City, Utah, the Alpine World Championships in RE Sweden. Uh, you went to RE Sweden next year, and obviously things are still up in the air, but World Championships in Alpine Skiing in Cortina, Italy in February, and then in March, the World Snowboard Championships uh, north of Beijing at the future Olympic site. Uh, is, is that satisfying to you, and can you foresee yourself competing at, at both World Championships next season? Yes, of course. It's uh, it's gonna be a big challenge. I'm really looking forward for this. I was so happy when I when I get this message that it's gonna be separate that I don't have to choose all the time because it's really terrible. Uh, any other time I have to choose between snowboarding and skiing, it's it's frustrating and I don't I don't like it. But now it's you know separate, so I don't have to choose and I can go both and just make this challenge. And I'm really looking forward for this. So we'll see how it goes. I'll prepare as good as I can uh, for both and we will see yeah good for you uh, glad glad that fis 
has this in, in their schedule, the upcoming season. So I want to look back, of course, on your amazing accomplishments in Pyeongchang 2018, which everybody remembers. But, but before that, uh, I think it's really cool for those that don't know, your grandfather was a two-time Olympic medalist in ice hockey for Czechoslovakia, uh, bronze and silver medal in, in the 1960s. Uh, he, he's here in Prague. Uh, how much of an inspiration was your, your grandfather? And, and I know your, your mother also was a figure skater, so a lot of winter sports history uh, among your family. Yes, that's right. Um, my, my grandpa actually was the one who, who learned me how to love the sport, who, who showed me the way. Me and my brother, when we were young, uh, we were doing a lot of sports. We were also playing hockey and we were with my, with my grandpa. We were cycling and swimming and running and playing football and all the sports. And uh, he really showed us how, what is so amazing about the sport, how, the spirit of the sport. And uh, he showed me how to love the sport, even though it's most of the time really painful <laughs> when you want to be the best on the, on, in the world. But um, it's still fun and it's still some kind of a passion, you know, you have to you have, to have for that. And uh, he showed me the way. So I'm very grateful for that. And he also, um, he also is uh, my fitness coach now because he, after his career, he was doing um, like a coach for a juniors um, team of uh, a national hockey team. And then he was doing some fitness programs and so, so he's still developing his, um, uh, his program and I'm doing his program and and so he's part of my fitness coach still even though he's not at the place at the time but he's making the plans and and we are very cooperating uh, very well and and from the mental side he he explained me and learned me so many things which I use in the reality so it's it's really uh, it's really awesome and my mom she is she used to be a figure skater she has also a great experience from the sports world which is very important and she's she's like a head coach of our team right now she's doing also a fitness program with me and she is, you know, the boss of everyone <laughs> on this planet. <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, that is really amazing with, with your grandfather. Uh, if I can ask, how old is he now? Uh, I believe he's 75. Okay. Yeah. 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 I and you have so. gold medals. He has a silver and bronze, so... Uh, Wait, no, seven, 79, 79, 79. already, yeah. So he <laughs> has a, a silver and bronze in ice hockey. You have two gold medals. I, I guess he's obviously taught you well. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think we are uh, collecting quite well as a, as a family. <laughs> he also has a gold medal from uh, World Championships 1972 from Prague, which was, at that time, it was very intense because, you know, we, we were playing against Russia, the finals, and uh, with the situation, it was, it was very intense. So, um, yeah, I think we are collecting some, some uh, good things. <laughs> nice stuff. Great story. So, so let's go back to Pyeongchang 2018. You arrive over in South Korea. Uh, you have the, have the Super G. I believe you had never finished better than 19th in a Super G before. You were ranked somewhere in the 40s. Uh, coming into that race in Jungsan, did you legitimately think you had a chance? And, and obviously tell us about your run. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I was 17th or something. It was the ma uh, the maximum in the World Cup so far until until I I gained this uh, unbelievable uh, run. <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was good on one uh, one thing was good there. Everything you know, everything set at the right time there. I I have to say that because. Um, my skis went very well. I, I had very well prepared ski, skis. I was not under that big of a pressure because I was there as a snowboarder, you know? Nobody expect anything will happen. So I didn't have that much pressure uh, than the other girls, which everyone, uh, you know, they, they really expect a lot. And um, 
everything went in the right direction. I didn't make no mistakes. I did the run as I planned, even though I think there were still like four four mistakes. But these mistakes were from the, um, you know, riding fast. Riding fast mistakes, which happen always, but you never know if it's riding fast mistake or if it's just just mistake, <laughs> which will cost you a lot of time. But these were riding fast mistakes, and I think, uh, yeah, you know, everything just sat there, and uh, I came to the finish, and I really, I honestly, really thought that it's a some kind of a mistake because uh, usually, uh, like. First, first race which I was riding there was GS, and I was riding the GS. And when I finished the, my run, there was a Estelle Leska shining on a table, and they had some kind of a mi mistake, or they have some problems with the uh, board where it was my name and my time, and they were not. They had some problems with that, and. And I thought the same thing happened in the Super G. So I came in the finish and I was like, oh my God, it's embarrassing for them that it happened again, you know. And that <laughs> they have a wrong time next to my name and they, have a, they will then have to change it. And, and I was like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. So... And I was, and and the, there was a camera guy in the finish, and he was like, "Come on, celebrate! You won!" I was like, "No, no, no! Calm down! It's they're gonna change the time. You know, it's embarrassing." Don't, and I really did. I didn't realize that it could be really my time, and I could really win the Olympics. I couldn't. I couldn't. You know, because I thought the run was yeah okay, but not that fast. And it was it was really weird. It was really weird. It was one of my favorite Winter Olympic moments ever. And you know we're so used to seeing athletes win gold and this jubilant celebration and all the family. And it was just like stunned silence. And it was so quiet. And like you mentioned, I love that the cameraman said, "Esther, you won," and you told him no. I mean, I don't think this has ever happened in the history of the Winter Olympics. <laughs> Yeah, it was a really funny moment, for sure. I will, I'll for sure remember it in the rest of my life. Now, I have to ask you, so now you go in to do the, the post-race press conference uh, uh, as an Olympic gold medalist, and, and you have your, your ski goggles on, and the moderator says, Esther, you can take off your ski goggles and, and tell everybody what you told him. <laughs> yes, actually, I, I said that uh, I was not prepared uh for that for the press conference or that i win or anything that uh i will probably need the uh, goggles because i didn't put my makeup on actually <laughs> my makeup is not uh, very uh, perfect today as well so i'll, I'll take them i'll take them. i got i got them prepared you're, you're, you're gonna put on your, your ski goggles for the interview right now no. all right you know what then then i'm gonna join you esther i feel like you're <laughs> gonna do it, and i feel like i should do the same i'm prepared are you ready? <laughs> you more comfortable now with the media? I'm for sure more comfortable like that. Yeah. Me too. So let's talk <laughs> about snowboarding. Seven <laughs> years later, if I'm correct, you have the parallel giant slalom in snowboarding. Here you're a heavy favorite. You won four overall parallel titles. I assume there was huge pressure on your shoulders in this event and uh, obviously succeeded. Uh, tell me about going out there and winning snowboard gold. Well, yes, it was a uh, completely different mental uh, preparation I have to do before the race because I, everybody were expecting that I will have a good result there. And, uh, you know, it's really difficult because it's the Olympics are very special in the time. It's just, you know, once in four years and you have only one chance to, to do a success. Okay, Esther, I want, I want to see your eyes now because this is amazing. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> but just because of you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. And so, well, yeah. uh, so uh, it was really um, a different, different time of mentality. I had to had to uh, go f for this race, but um, it's as I said, you know, I'm. Uh, I don't want to say that it's. Uh, unfair the race is unfair because it's, it's for sure everybody has the same conditions but it's only one race 
for instance, for me has more weight. I know that for everybody else has more weight, this uh, gold medals on, on the Olympics. But for me, uh, has more weight this season where I get was second overall. But I, I collected the results through the whole season. And it was all, you know, what I accomplished was the in the end some some result so it it shown how how am i uh, where am i uh, in the uh, the whole season uh, view and uh, you know in the olympics is always just this this one race and you also need some luck to to prove uh, that you are the best one uh, at the one moment you you need and so uh, th this was very, very much different because everyone were expecting very much that that I will do some good result, as I said, and and so. But I really enjoyed the race, and uh, I didn't do any mistake, and that was that was the key to uh, to uh, win. You know, there. <laughs> Don't do any mistakes. Unbelievable! You definitely delivered in the clutch to to win that second gold medal. And then, what were your the final weekend there uh, of the games like for you in Pyeongchang? Uh, they were coming to a close, and obviously, you had the honor of carrying the Czech Republic flag in the in the closing ceremony. You know, what what did that mean to you? Yeah, this was cool that we had the races that I was there pretty much from the almost the start because I, I was starting on skis. I was doing some trainings, preparing trainings there. I then, then I was racing a uh, GS on skis, super G on skis. And then, then I had like four days or five days and then, then uh, snowboard. And so I, I enjoyed the whole Olympics and I could close it uh, with the, with the flag in my hands. And it was, uh, it was very special, and then when I was returning home to to here to Prague, there was a on the old town square they made a stage, and and I was not they, they when I was entering in Korea when I was entering the airplane, my manager was like, yeah, we have a little bit surprise for you. They were gonna st set the stage in the old town square, and they're gonna make a like a party for the people to, to meet you. I was, and I was like, oh my god, it's gonna be so embar embarrassing. Nobody will gonna come to see me you know because it's gonna it's a it's a huge square and it's gonna be like i thought that it's gonna be empty and uh i came on uh on the stage and there was the the streets around the square was full with the people the square was full with the people mm -hmm. everywhere people and everyone was screaming my name and i i just realized that i was in some kind of a bubble you know in korea all the time and i didn't really realize that there were the people here which saw me racing and which were you know there with me in in some way and it was it was so amazing and beautiful that these people you know were cheering for me and they came because it was that day was like minus 25 here it was really cold and they came and they were waiting there for me until i came from from the airports to to there it was it was really amazing well deserved, Esther. Definitely well deserved. Uh, things uh, things changed quickly. So so we sit here now, and again, there's some uncertainty in the sports world. The Tokyo Summer Olympics postponed one year. Uh, we hope, we think, Beijing 2022 will be in two years. Uh, if all goes well, do you think you can compete once again in in both snowboarding and alpine skiing uh, at the next Winter Games in, in China? <laughs> yes, that's the plan <laughs> so far. I think uh, there's nothing holding me back. I'm healthy and I'm really looking forward for this. I still have fun riding the, down the hill, even though it's on snowboard and skis. And that's the main thing that's the most important for me in the end, to, to have fun doing it and to have this kind of a met motivation which I have. And yeah, we'll see. I will fight for it. Nice, obviously. With the training, it must be somewhat difficult juggling the, the snowboarding and skiing. And we were in Kranz Montana, Switzerland in February. You were on the podium and a journalist asked you, how do you recover doing both skiing and snowboarding? And I remember vividly, you said, I don't recover, I'm a robot. My, <laughs> my technician just puts some oil on me and, and does some mechanics. But that, that's not really true, is it, Esther? Ah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> What do you think? It's not possible for a human being. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so. My I don't have a physiotherapist. Uh, I have a mechanics, you know, and he always like came with a screwdriver, just 
tied something up, put some oil on me, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm not sure I believe you, but if you say so. In, in, in all seriousness, how is it, and, and moving forward, you know, training with, with Justin Ryder, your snowboard coach, and of course, Thomas Bank, your alpine skiing coach, uh, is it like two guys kind of pulling you in two directions? Well, I think we are like a divorced family, you know, like they are the divorced couple. So I'm, I'm the ch child in between. <laughs> so I'm partly with my mom or with my dad, <laughs> well, with my dad or with my dad. And, uh, but they're handling it very well right now. <clears throat> I think the, the times where uh, I had coaches, which were really like fighting for me, like, you have to choose a sport, you have to do this and so. And I said, no, 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 I'll do two sports, don't worry about it. And they say, no, no, you have to choose, it's already time, you're gonna, you're never gonna be on the top when, when you're gonna do like two sports. And I'm like, no, 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 leave it up to me, I, I, I will handle it, don't worry, I will try it. And uh, now I'm on the place that my, my coaches, for sure, each of them would like like me to do more skiing or more snowboarding, but they are cooperating very well, and I, I'm i very happy for that. And um, it's it's the only chance to make it work, you know? So they have, to, uh, they have to find the way, and I think we are finding quite a good way the, the past years. <laughs> Nice. It seems like it uh, is all working out despite some of the, the naysayers. So I, I want to ask you about a third sport. I, I know in the summertime uh, you, you enjoy some windsurfing, which right. is an Olympic event in the summertime in, in Tokyo. And actually uh, in, in Paris in 2024, kiteboarding for the first time will be an Olympic event. Uh, is there any uh, aspirations to somehow compete in, uh, in in the summer games in in one of these uh, sports on the water? <laughs> well, I was honestly really thinking about it after the <laughs> this, the uh, last Winter Olympics, and I was trying to figure out uh, what are the chances there. And I I I uh, learned that there were. Uh, there is a uh, windsurfing, but it's not the discipline I'm doing. I'm doing a uh, slalom. It's really fast riding there <laughs> and back, and I'm I'm loving it because I love the speed. And they have a quite a different uh, type of windsurfing where you have a big boat and you have a uh, you have a uh, ropes uh, tighten up. So it's something in between windsurfing and sailing, which I don't do, and I don't. I'm not very into it, but. Uh, there is a chance they will put my discipline on. In this case, I would need to do, I, o I already also uh, was uh, searching for what, what would do in this case. Uh, this case, I would need to do some races in World Cup and nominate myself for the Olympics. Yeah. And that's gonna, that would need to be in summer. So uh, in some way it's really complicated but I wouldn't say impossible. Like, for sure not the next year, but maybe, you know, in the future, because I really love windsurfing. And I believe when, even if I decide to finish this snowboarding and skiing career, then I would pr probably need to do something because, because I'm very competitive type and I, I just need to race, you know, all the time. So uh, I will need to find something like that. And maybe it's going to be windsurfing. Who knows? But but you do know that kiteboarding will make its debut at the Paris 2024 Games for the first time. And, uh, you know, that's obviously one of the fastest sailing disciplines. Uh, how about kiteboarding Paris 24? You have a couple years to prepare. Yeah, I didn't try the kiteboarding yet. But, uh, yeah, it, when it's this way, then I will probably have to try it. <laughs> and then we'll see. <laughs> All right. It's, it's, it's fun for us as uh, journalists and fans to see you keep adding sports. So no pressure, Esther, but we want to see you keep, you know, adding sports to your repertoire. I understand. It's not enough. Snowboarding and skiing is already boring. I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> it's not boring at all. But I've got, I think, one last question for you, Esther. And this may be the most difficult of them all for you. And obviously you can navigate it any way you want. Because I know you have, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of relationships and all these snow sports. But at the end of the day, who is cooler, skiers or snowboarders? Oh, 
That's a tough question because I think the snowboarders and the skiers will going to see this interview. And <laughs> so I, I think the most cool is when uh, someone do both. <laughs> Very diplomatic, Esther. You learned, you learned well. <laughs> how, how about this? If you have a free day on the slopes and you don't have to uh, train, just a beautiful powder day, let's say in Austria, would you rather be on your snowboard through the trees or on your skis? Yeah, this is, this is a stiffy uh, question because this never happens. But <laughs> if there is this day when I have a free and uh, there's a powder day, I go for snowboarding. If there's a powder, I go for snowboarding because it's much more fun with, uh, with snowboarding powder. Fantastic, thanks for your answer. Esther, uh, all the best. Uh, I hope you get back to training. I hope you get back on snow uh, and, and everything goes well uh, in the off season and obviously uh, looking forward to next season. You've got great energy, uh, great passion. So uh, we, we all look forward to seeing you both on the skis and on the snowboard. Thank you very much. Thank you for invitation. All right. All the best, Esther. We'll talk to you soon and hopefully see you outside, not just, uh, not just under a roof because it's, uh, we're all getting, I think, a little bit tired of it. Yeah, I'm also looking forward. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Esther. And thanks for you to tuning into this edition of ATR Radio. I'm Brian Pinelli. Around the Rings, for more than 25 years, your best source of news about the Olympic Games aroundtherings.com. Have a great day, everybody.